I want to show you some of Captivate's preferences and show you how you can export and then import those preferences from one project into another. Save yourself a little bit of the repetitive stuff that you don't like to do. So I'm going to go to my Edit menu and I'm going to choose Preferences. If you're using the Macintosh version of Captivate, the things I'm going to show you are identical except on the Mac. If you want to get to Preferences, you go to the Adobe Captivate menu and choose Preferences. So check out some of the settings here. For instance, under Project Information, you can see that I've already filled out this project with the name of an author, company name, email address, website, copyright notice, the standard stuff. Brand new projects do not have this information filled out, so if there's a way to get this content out of here, that would save me a little bit of time. Swift size and quality. Right now, the swift size is high. Maybe my standards say, let's put my swift size out to medium, so I'll lower that. Under Publish Settings, I'm going to deselect Enable Accessibility. I'm going to deselect Play Tap Audio for Recorded Typing. Again, maybe that's just the standards that I like to have all my lessons follow. And under the Start and End category, I'm going to change my preloader percentage to 50%. Also notice, I'm going to deselect Fade Out on the last slide. So I'm going to press my Enter key to acknowledge this, but one thing to pay attention to, I have established a preloader here, which is the image that your users will see while they're waiting for the lesson to load. The image called Cropped Logo JPEG. I want to see when I export and then import the preferences, does everything come in or are some things left behind? So it's interesting to come back and see that. So I'm going to press the Enter key to acknowledge OK. Now I'm going to export those preferences. That's simple. File, Export, Preferences, pick a location. I'll go to my C drive, open up my Captivate 6 data folder, and I'll just leave the name alone, HTML5 Me Preferences, that's the name of the project, so I'll just press Save. I'll press OK, and I'm going to close the project now. I don't need it open any longer. I'm going to make a blank project. The size is unimportant. I'm just going to make a blank project. What I want to show you is what do those preferences look like out of the box, and what will they look like after I import the preferences that I just exported. So I'm going to visit my Preferences dialog box, check out the project information. It's not filled out. Swift size and quality, back to an application default. Publish settings, enable accessibility is on, play tap audio is on. And under start and end, preloader is set to 100%. There is no preloader setup. Look at these fade options. Fade in on the first slide is not turned on. Fade out on the last slide, not turned on. So I'll press Cancel. And I'll go to my File menu and choose Import, Preferences. I'll find that Preferences file. Again, it's a CPR file. I'll acknowledge OK. Let's take a look at those Preferences now under Edit, Preferences. Project information, that's filled out, nice. Swift size and quality, set to medium, once again, maybe my corporate standard. Publish settings, enable accessibility turned off, play tap turned off, start and end. The preloader set to 50, the fade has been set. Notice that when you import preferences, not everything comes in. And interesting, the preloader does not. So I would have to browse and load up that preloader. But most of the stuff did come in, so it's going to save me some time. One final note, I always tell my students, it's a best idea, if you can, create a project template and base all of your projects on a template and all of the stuff would already have been set perfectly. But you don't have to make a template to create content in Captivate. And if you're not going to do that, that ability to import and export things like preferences is really going to save you some time.